Hello and welcome to my review of Drazar from the Blood of the Phoenix box set which will cost you £140. Uh, currently that box set in October is the only way to get hold of this new plastic version of Drazar. I thought I'd squeeze this video out uh, early. I was going to put it up on next week Warhammer Wednesday but it's such a cool model and I've built all the models in the set now so I thought I would release it early. I hope you're having a excellent Friday and you're looking forward to the weekend and if you're working hey I'm with you I'm working too so let's get through this together. It's very interesting because uh, the most expensive kind of single uh, model miniature character whatever you want to call it is uh, the Talos uh, for Drakari, which is £32.50. Um, but the actual kind of named character or special character, whatever you want to call it, is either the Grotesque or the Homunculus. They're both £15.50. So this is going to break the the boundaries there for Drakari, for Dark Eldar, um, when he is released uh, individually. Uh, my best guess is he's going to be between £25 and £30. I'm more sort of leaning towards the £30 uh, mark. Um, because the sprue is quite large, it's larger than a clamshell pack, so they're going to have to put it in a plastic uh, tray within a cardboard box, and typically those um, miniatures are, are £30, just because of the size, although recently there have been um, characters in you know, proper cardboard boxes, like the Lieutenant in Phobos armour, um, and he was £25. But he's still going to break the... the the uh, £15.50 barrier at least for uh, Dark Eldar, Drakari. More models for the Xenos armies, the better in my opinion. Primaris and Space Marines, they're all right. Imperium's all right, but you know, Xenos is where it's at. Um, I much prefer, you know, the creativity um, surrounding uh, all those models. Of course, uh, he goes very well with the uh, Incubi. The new Incubi, we'll be doing size comparisons in a moment uh, with those. Um, it's important to note that you can't get the Incubi at all on uh, Games Workshop's web store. Um, I've searched and searched and searched everywhere so um, we, you're just gonna have to wait until uh, they're released um, separately out of this box set which you know it could be six or seven months. Uh, that's how long it took uh, to release like the Primaris Eliminators um, separately for example. Okay let's get right down to the model uh, himself then. Um, we'll zoom in and we'll have a look at him. Uh, absolutely fantastic model. Uh, I do prefer um, Jane Czar, I have to say. You know, I don't want to take too much away from him. Um, Jane Czar is a beautiful, beautiful model. So Drazar, lots of detail on this model. I love the uh, kind of scenic base going on. There's a little Eldar rune um, that's, that's popped off there. There's this vine. I, I do like the vines that are creeping up around this. Uh, really cool little Chozo from um, Metroid there. No, no, sorry. It's a, it must be some kind of Dark Eldar or Eldar kind of glyph thing um, with this staff. Looks pretty cool. I love the runes uh, in this, um, I want to I call it Wraithbone, but probably isn't, um, but still Eldar kind of um, scenery. The the blades are absolutely fantastic. Uh, clearly he can, um, you know, slot them together and make a kayaking um, incubi uh, looking uh, miniature. This guy's really horny. Look how many horns he's got. Anyway, sorry, um, Drizar's still hornier because uh, he's got the two um, curved horns, these two are here, and then these erect uh, horns right at the front there. Um, so six horns, yeah. Um, the one thing I, I sort of don't like about the model, if there is one thing, uh, are these like stones or jewels, whatever, because they're kind of flowing, you know, that I don't know whether that's on purpose, like mid mid-air, but... I mean, you could get the detail underneath, but I would have preferred them flat on his on his chest. Uh, but there are probably reasons why it's it's like that. I just can see them getting in the way when he's swinging his blades, and I know it's probably an action pose. He's just jumped on here, ready to strike. They would only be like that if he literally just just this moment um, jumped on this, um, rather than in this pose about to leap off it. They would be then close to his chest. Uh, they just get in his way when he's swinging his swords and things. I know it's science fiction, uh, but I do like to pick apart these models. <laughs> um, lovely uh, face detail there, helmet detail. 
Um, I love the runes and things on the swords. If you can see some um, dust and things, that's just obviously where I filed away the uh, mold lines. I suggest you do the same, because otherwise uh, it is going to look like a model um, rather than like a, uh, a character uh, if you leave them on. Um, I've missed them out there though on his sort of bum armor, bum plate. <laughs> Glutamus Armorous. Um, anyway, uh, he's got this big old ponytail thing going on. Huge. Obviously, no bigger than Jane Zars, clearly, but um, that's quite cool how it um, is attached to the uh, helmet and sweeps around these these big, um, I want to call them, I so want to call them power plant um, uh, vents or something, uh, coolant towers. You, I don't know what they are, but you know, they're on there. Eldar have them all over the place. Um, we'll do some size comparisons in a moment with um, the Visarch as well, because that's quite a cool uh, melee focus model as well. Um, but yeah, overall, really, really impressed. Uh, there's even an Imperial Eagle model there. So secretly, it's a double agent um, working for Eldar and uh, um, the Imperium, clearly. <laughs> anyway, lovely model, um, love all the detail. You know, if you're into Dark Eldar and Drakari, th then this is gonna uh, float your boat big time. I can I can see the appeal, and he works really well with the, the rest of the new Incupi. Okay, so let's do some size comparisons straight away. Um, I already showed you uh, Kayak Man, um, Kayak Kibai. Uh, here he is. Um, yeah, he's pretty much the same height uh as as a normal incubi um obviously this has got the the dual glaives um slotted as one um and it makes this awesome looking uh bladed weapon uh much more efficient than uh, thanos's uh uh dual blade uh but there we go that's him next to a incubi uh next to some uh howling banshees then so here's just one of the new plastic howling banshees uh similar sort of size Eldar R, um, but yeah, sort of towers over a, a normal sort of troop there. Uh, of course, next to Jane Zar, here we go. Um, I've done a size comparison uh, with her and him uh, in her review, um, but I think essentially she's just a little bit taller just because of the Triskele and, and a bit of her hair, but there's not much in it, guys. Um, they're both going to look uh like they're in action uh on the on the battlefield if, if you if you put them up against each other um i think that in the battles that they ran uh sort of one-on-one -on -one, jane czar won a kind like most of the battles but that's just by a smidgen um you know drazar does have that invulnerable save which really does help and jane czar has nothing it's going to be interesting to see whether they push uh, any uh, invulnerable saves on the other phoenix lords um i can definitely see azure man uh and um morgan ra getting invulnerable saves and possibly even Karandras, um, which is Striking Scorpion's Phoenix Lord. Okay, more size comparisons are on their way. Uh, let's do one with uh, the Visarch, another melee focused uh, model. Visarch is, I'd probably say, a bit taller, just a little bit, but then again, he is in an upright position. Um, definitely works well with the Incubi. Uh, and with Drazar, if you wanted them as a combined force, they look pretty cool together. Um, kicking Imperial uh, butt. Uh, and then let's do one with um, Eldrad. Eldrad is you know, just a smidgen taller, just because of the sword, and he's, he's raised up on that base. Um, both lovely um, models in their own right, though. Uh, Wraith Guard, right there. Uh, he's taller than a Wraith Guard, and a Wraith Lord. Barely comes up to the, the head, I want to call it, of the Wraith Lord. Uh, but yeah, on that scenic base, definitely comes up to the waist. Shows you how Wraith Lords, how, how huge they are. Haven't got a Wraith Knight. I'd love to unbox and review a Wraith Knight. I really would. Uh, so as always, you know, your support to the channel could make that a possibility. I'd love to do all the reviews of all the Eldar models I own. And uh, getting a Wraith Knight at some point to do that would be fantastic. Finally, Incarn. Here is Incarn. Uh, right there. Yeah, again, works really well with Incarn uh, as a big sort of diorama kind of scenic base thing going on. And Jane Zar, they both work really well with these models. There's so much detail now in these plastic models. It's it's fantastic. Um, I mean, these are kind of models that I 
We wouldn't have thought be possible. Um, I'd only think that they'd be possible with Forge World, but here we are. We've got these plastic, lovely um, Eldar, Eldari models. So that's all the size comparisons. And then one final size comparison that I always like to do is just with a couple of Imperial models. Got the normal Space Marine on the left and the Primaris Space Marine on the right. So yeah, he does definitely tower over even a Primaris um, Space Marine, a lot, lot taller. I mean, if we put him size to size, Primaris is taller, um, you know, from foot to, to head. With that scenic base, that gives him uh, about an inch or so uh, extra. And uh, But yeah, on the battlefield, he's, he's going to be taller. Um, they seem to be doing this a lot now, uh, making sort of standard size models a lot taller. Uh, obviously, Jane Zar, they made her a lot taller, you know, by giving her this, uh, you know, whopping great hair, which I'm sure gets in the way. She must have thought, maybe she hasn't fallen over, over her own hair before, but, you know, kind of like a Rapunzel situation. Code Rapunzel, I want to call it, whenever she, you know, falls over her own hair. But still, uh, they're kind of doing this a lot. Um, you know, they did it with... Uh, Shrike, didn't they, for the Raven Guard, making models taller. Uh, they've made them wider uh, with the bigger bases and things, and now they're sort of making them a bit taller. Okay, so this is my part of the review where I will go through all of Drazar's rules. I guess you can find them in your uh, Drakari Codex that came out a couple of years ago. I don't have that, so unfortunately, unlike Jane Zara, I can't compare his, I say new rules, his rules in the Blood of the Phoenix and uh, book two is rules in the Drakari. So if they are slightly different, I'd really appreciate if you put it in the comments and um, just, you know, share it with everyone where the, the differences are. Okay, so um, in the new uh, Blood of the Phoenix book, his power points cost is, is a six and his points cost is 120. I've got a funny feeling that that's cheaper than he, than he was in that book. Um, his movement speed is seven inches. His weapon skill and ballistic skill are both two plus. His strength is four, his toughness is four. Six wounds, four attacks, leadership nine, and a save of two plus. Um, he's a single model equipped with executioner's demiclaves. Only one of this model may be included in your army. The executioner's demiclaves. Um, each time a bearer fights, choose one of the profiles. So we can use them as a single blade, uh, which is a strength plus one. That's not a huge increase, uh, so it's strength 5. AP minus 3, damage 2. That's pretty good, it's damage 2 though. When he uses them as a dual blade, the strength is the user, which is only 4. AP um, drops to only minus 2, but the damage is still 2. But a model attacking with dual blades can make 2 additional attacks with them each time it fights. That's a whopping 6 attacks there. Pretty decent. 6 attacks, alright, minus 2 isn't that good, but you're getting the damage 2. Abilities. Power from Pain. Now this may well be in the Drakari Codex, um, but I'm obviously brand new to this. What the Power From Pain um, ability gives him is this unit gains a bonus depending on which battle round it is. As shown below, we'll go through them. Uh, note that all bonuses are cumulative. For example, in the second battle round, uh, wounds are ignored on a roll of six, and you can re-roll the dice when determining how far a unit advances or charges. So, the battle round, here we go. Battle round one, Inured to suffering. Roll 1d6 each time a model with this bonus loses a wound. On a 6, the model does not lose that wound. That's pretty good for battle round number 1. Eager to flay. You can re-roll the dice when determining how far a unit with this bonus moves when it advances or charges. 3. Flensing Fury. Add 1 to hit rolls made for this unit with this bonus in the fight phase. 4. Emboldened by bloodshed. Units with this bonus automatically pass morale tests and five plus mantle of agony. Subtract one from the leadership characteristic of enemy units that are within six inches of any units with this bonus in the morale phase. Um, and they're all cumulative. So if you get to about around five or more, you're gonna get all of those. One to the hit rolls, uh, sixes to ignore wounds, the extra advances, automatic pass morale tests, and subtracting one from the leadership. So power from pain is fantastic not overlooked it's just obviously hard to to keep a obviously it might be a bit tricky to keep that in the forefront of your mind as you're going through but if you're a dark elder player you're, you're probably used to that other abilities this model has a five plus invulnerable save i think i mentioned he's got four plus invulnerable but he's got five plus so two plus normal five plus invulnerable pretty decent it's got six wounds as well anyway murderous assault if this model charges in the charge phase it can fight an additional time in the next fight phase that is fantastic so you really want to get him 
to be charging because he can have two lots of um, fighting. And obviously, if he's got six attacks, that's 12 attacks in the next fight phase. Amazing. Um, lethal precision. If the wound roll for an attack made with a melee weapon by this model is an unmodified six, add two to damage characteristic of that melee weapon for that attack. That's fantastic. So wound rolls on sixes, you add two to the damage. What? Tormentors. Each time your opponent makes a morale test for this unit that is within six inches of any incubi units and the result of the morale test equals the highest leadership characteristic in the unit, the test is failed and one model flees the unit. Pretty good. So, you know, your enemy is going to be fleeing if the morale tests equal the same. Master of Blades. Add one to wound rolls for friendly incubi units whilst they are within six inches of this model. That's fantastic. So you're adding one to wound. I would say they're going to need it, you know, because their strength, incubi normal strength, is only three. Uh, it's plus one if they use it as a single blade, but you're probably going to be wanting to use them as uh, the dual blades because you're getting those extra attacks. Um, it depends. I mean, you know, it depends if you want that extra AP and the extra um, uh, strength. It works similar in the way of the Cry of the War and ending for um, Jane Zar. You know, Jane Zar helps their whole unit um, fight first, always fight first. And Drazar helps the Incubi by adding one to wound rolls. And you're going to need that, like I said, with strength three or strength four, you're going to need that um, extra uh, wound rolls. Uh, keywords, Eldari, Drakari, Incubi, Character Infantry and Drazar. Um, I really like this model. Uh, I think he's very solid. Um, you know, he's got a decent number of attacks, especially with the dual blades. Um, he's got a decent number of wounds. Uh, weapon skill and ballistic skill, amazing. Uh, his weapon itself is pretty decent, adding that plus one strength. Um, I think Jane Zar is better just because of the uh, extra inch and the fact that she can you know, charge and advance in one turn, you know, uh, subtracting one from hit rolls. Then you've got the Ancient Doom and Battle Focus. No, no one can fire Overwatch at her. She's got a shooting attack, you know, that Silent Death has effective range of 20 inches and it's still AP minus three. And her strength is six instead of five. Um, yeah, she doesn't have the invulnerable five plus save and it, it should have been in there, in my opinion. She should have an invulnerable save. She's a Phoenix Lord. You know, if a little, Eldar Farseer or uh, even a Warlock has an invulnerable save with their rune armor, you'd think, you know, I say an inter et Eternal, you'd think a Phoenix Lord would have that. It's a named character. But still, that's the only omission I can I can say of, of Jane Zar that I would have liked to have incorporated, even if it meant an extra 20 or 30 points onto a cost. Um, but Drazar, you're getting a fair bit for your money. Uh, you're not obviously getting any um, shooting abilities. He is going to work wonders in your squad of Incubi and they're really going to um, do wonders for you. I'd love to see some kind of battle report or something between um, Drazar and his squad of Incubi against Jane Zar and uh, her squad of um, Howling Banshees. Anyway, what do you guys think of the model and the rules? Are you looking forward to when this model um, is released separately? Please do put your thoughts and opinions and comments and things down below as always. Be great to hear from you. I do read every comment. Um, thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. May the winds of fate guide your sword.